Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. My family hasn't really been all that well financially, and my parents always had to make compromises whenever it comes to my needs versus theirs. I started understanding these things at a young age because I remember we'd be meeting everyone at my grandparents' house, and my uncle would purposefully show off how well off he is. He'd ask questions that would embarrass my parents because we weren't able to afford all the things he threw money at. I always hated him for it, but never spoke against him. At the end of the day, my dad told me that I shouldn't concern myself with anyone other than myself and my own life. And that's exactly what I did. I fully focused on making sure no one can make fun of me in the future and no one would be able to touch a single hair on my head. I pursued a major in business and economics and eventually ended up having my own company. Now, I'm doing great in life, and I also made sure my parents got everything they wanted and when they sacrificed so much for me. Of course, my uncle didn't like it. His son was a black sheep of the family, and the only disappointment in his life. To be honest, I wouldn't say I'm proud of who I was during childhood because when I was in my senior year of high school, I was too angsty to keep my mouth shut. And whenever my uncle talked about dad's car being in a shabby condition or the presents we bought for Christmas, I retorted by asking my cousin if he's discovered any new drugs. He was just a year older than me and had already been to jail at that point. He was a junkie and flunked high school, so he had to repeat his final year. That was the only thing that shut my uncle up. As we started becoming adults, my uncle gradually withdrew from our family. He couldn't bear to look at me being better and his son being a disappointment. Finally, after my company actually did well, he was so done with me that he cut all contact. He stopped showing up at holiday get-togethers and stopped taking my dad's calls. I tried to reach out to him when my dad mentioned that he's worried about my uncle's well-being. He now lives alone. I finally showed up at his house, and when he saw me, he actually got mad. I was shocked to see him being so rude. He started projecting and said that I'm showing up to his house to show off my lavish life and that I'm not welcome there. He said that ignoring calls and texts should have been a hint that he wants nothing to do with us, but apparently my family that grew up in a poor society with bad taste wouldn't know about social conduct. So he told me to my face to never call him again and asked my parents to stay away from him and his family. Enraged didn't even cover what I felt at that moment. He's taken every opportunity he could get to insult us, and now he thinks that we're the same as him? The disrespect alone by associating my parents' manners with himself was enough to send me over the edge, but I took some deep breaths and left his place without cursing him out. I have always thought there's no point in wasting my energy and breath on someone mean and rude like my uncle. I'd rather use my time on meaningful things. This was about eight years ago. We haven't seen or talked to each other in that long. My grandparents and both my parents have passed away, and whatever familial bonds I had have faded. The only person in my life that I call family is my wife. Even when I was getting married, I didn't invite my uncle, so it was really unexpected when I received a message from him. I haven't changed my digits in years, and yet I didn't think he'd still have my contacts saved. He was saying how it's been too long since we met each other, and he missed me when he saw the old photographs from family vacations. I actually let out a scoff because did he forget the last thing he said to me? I left him on read, but then he called me a few days later. I don't know why he was being so forthcoming with the contacts, but I knew that it can't be out of the goodness of his heart. So I picked up the third time he called me and asked me why he's calling me, but he just laughed and said that he wanted to catch up. 
He said it's been too long and he regrets how things ended between us. So he took the uh, step to try and recover our relationship. He started talking about how he's the older one and thus knows what's important in life. I let him talk for about two minutes before interrupting him. I told him directly that I don't want anything to do with him, so if there's no other reason why he called me, then I'll hang up. Finally, he showed his true colors. He said that he needs help, and there's no one else he can go to. I asked him what the problem was and found out that he actually had surgery a year ago after he broke his left limb in an accident. They transplanted ligaments into his leg and he was able to walk a little, but now he has chronic pain and the medication isn't working. When he consulted with the doctors, they said that he'll need another surgery this time, but the cost isn't covered by his insurance anymore. So he needs financial help because he doesn't have anything left. I asked him, how can that be when he never missed a chance to tell us we were poor and he finally came clean? Apparently, he spent everything on his son's rehabs. His son barely makes anything from his retail job and they're not even in contact. My uncle lives completely alone and was surviving on his life savings for the past year after losing his job. He had no one else he could ask this from and he can't live with the pain anymore. I did feel a little sorry for how pathetic his condition is, but it was nowhere near enough to make me forget how he treated my parents all these years. We were worse than plague for him, and the reason he cut contact with me was my finances. So now he needs help, and it's the same thing that he hated about me that is going to help him? I couldn't just up and say yes here. I am a petty person and I want him to suffer for his behavior. So I told him I wouldn't help and he should not contact me again before hanging up. Am I being an a-hole here? I don't know how severe chronic pain is, but is it really my responsibility? Update one. The opinions here are so divided that I don't even know what to make of them. Some of you want me to let him suffer and grieve about how he lived his life, while a lot of you think that I should have helped a person suffering so severely. Well, I already mentioned that I have no idea how severe is chronic pain, and from the research I did after finding out my uncle has it, it wasn't really enlightening. All the article said that it can be treated with medications and surgery is rarely an option, especially if someone had already gone through a surgery before. There are more risks involved with someone his age undergoing another surgery, no matter how minor. Anyway, from what I've learned so far, I don't think that he even needs a surgery. I'm sure the doctors would prescribe him something to help ease the pain. It's just him being a nuisance and shameless that he's asking me to pay for an optional surgery that not even his insurance is covering. Update 2. My cousin called me today. This one wasn't unexpected because I have been in touch with him over the years. We usually talk once or twice a year and catch each other up on what's happening in our lives. So far, we have avoided my uncle's subject every time we called because our family's relationship didn't concern us. I was expecting him to avoid that conversation topic again, but he actually called me to talk to me about my uncle. He told me that he hasn't talked to his dad since his limb surgery, and yesterday he received a call from him. Uncle told him about my conversation with him and how I straight up denied any help to him. He actually called him and guilt-tripped him into calling me and convincing me to help my uncle out financially. I understand why it was hard for my cousin to stand up to him. The truth is, even though I used my cousin to shut my uncle up, I found out in my uni years what my cousin was going through. Let's just say that his parents might have been able to afford fancy things, but they definitely couldn't afford the emotional capacity required to raise a child. My cousin ended up with a lot of mental disorders because of his upbringing, and drugs were the things that helped him. Later, when he realized how wrong his choices were, his dad helped him out to get clean and start over. Maybe that's why he feels like he needs to talk to me on my uncle's behalf. I couldn't bear that even now my uncle is creating so many problems for all of us. 
and using his son like this? I don't even know how low that level is, but I'm still not going to help him. He's a horrible person and he needs to suffer for it. Update three. It's been two months and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't escape my uncle. He kept harassing me by texting, calling and showing up at my company and even went as far as to harass my cousin a few more times. I was so tired of his BS that I filed a report against him and got a restraining order. I even told my cousin to do the same, but he said that he'll just block him for a while. I don't know if that's going to help or not, but I'm glad that I'll have some peace now. Being legally able to sue someone is a completely different kind of fun. NTA, not the a-hole. If that man wants you out, stay out. And he should stay away too. He cut the contact so he can stand on it. YTA, a man suffering from the worst pain possible, asked you for help and you denied it? This truly is the end of humans as a civilization. Next story. Where do I even begin? I'm 18, female. My dad married my stepmom, Rose, when I was about two years old. He died when I was six because of cancer. At the time, my little brother, Austin, was two, and she was pregnant with my sister, Alyssa. She promised my dad that she would take care of me when he's gone. After my dad died, Rose left me to foster care. She told me she can't take care of me right now, but after her baby is born, she will be back for me. But she didn't come back. As I got older, I reached out to her. So did my social worker. But she refused to allow me to see my siblings. I did this every year, and she refused every year. After turning 18, I reached out to Rose again, and she told me I'm a stranger. Her children don't even know I exist, and they have each other. They don't need me, and she wants to keep it that way. She told me to go look for my mom's relatives if I want a family, that she and her children are not my family. It wasn't a pleasant meeting. A few days later, I said to myself, screw it. I do exist. I'm a real person. I will go and tell my siblings myself. I talked to my Austin's best friend, I found her on social media, and told her everything, had lots of pictures and documents as well. Once she was convinced, she invited Austin and Alyssa over and I met them and told them everything. I had a lot of pictures, including some of me and him together when he was a baby. Also of me and my dad and Rose as well. Also, a few with me, with my dad, on his final days, which they said Rose had shown them very similar pictures, but I wasn't in any of them. It was very emotional, but they were angry, especially Austin because he always felt like something was wrong, but couldn't put it together. Rose had always told him it was because their dad had died. Anyway, they called their grandma, Rose's mom, and she confessed as well, told them that she wanted to tell them the truth, but Rose had threatened that she would cut off contact if she did. They eventually went home and confronted their mom, and all hell broke loose. Rose was initially furious with me, even called the police. They dismissed her after talking to Austin and Alyssa, called me and said some very nasty things about me, my mom and my dad's mom for some reason too. They both passed away. Anyway, I talked to my siblings a few more times, and a couple of days later, Rose called me again and told me she's happy to let me see my siblings and have a real relationship. She lost the war with Austin and Alyssa and invited me over. I went there and had a good day with them. Then she asked me to help her make amends with the kids, to tell them that her not telling them about me was a mutual decision between her, my social worker, and my dad because they all believed it would be best. She wants this so that she can move on and for the kids to stop blaming her. So far, I've refused. AITA for what I did initially, telling my sibling the truth, and what I continue to do, refusing to help her blame my dead dad for this, basically.
NTA, your stepmother, lied to you and abandoned you during the most vulnerable time of your life. Your need to connect with your siblings is completely understandable. As far as lying to help your stepmother move on, this is not your responsibility. It seems like her first impulse in any situation is to lie, and as she has now found it, that catches up to you. Don't lie to your siblings now. They have been lied to their entire life. They don't need to be lied to again. You have a chance to give them a relationship that is based entirely on trust. If your SM wants to fix her relationship with her kids, she can start by owning up to what she did and stop lying. Besides, if you do back up her current lie, it makes you the villain and you have no assurances that she will not stab you in the back again and then say it was 100% your idea that you were estranged for so long. Your best bet here is to just tell the truth to these kids from here on out and not take part in any lies. The kids deserve to have someone in their lives that they can trust. NTA Rarely do I feel so angry, but damn, it's well beyond a-hole behavior to abandon your stepchild and pretend they don't exist. Stand your ground by not bowing to her demands. Rose is definitely the type of person who is only interested in herself. And I sense the only reason she's inviting you over to see your siblings is because she sees you as the only way to win her kids back. Once they're won back by you saying it was mutual, it'll go back to how it was before. Once she realizes she can't win her kids back, she'll go full manipulation batshit mode. Next story. I'm 27-year-old female. My sister-in-law, female, 32, is very overbearing and has to be the center of attention which is fine most of the time. I'm a very passive person who prefers to not be the center of attention. Sister-in-law has proven to make things about her on numerous occasions. She announced her pregnancy at my engagement party, shared she was moving to another state at her brother's graduation, and did more little things to steal moments from others. She seems to have the whole family wrapped around her little finger. Last year, I was starting to plan my twins' first birthday party. With her living out of state, I asked her to let me know if she could make it on the date I had picked out. She confirmed, and so I went on with planning. Flash forward to about a month before the party, I sent out email invitations to their birthday party. My husband and I then got bombarded with texts saying that Every person on his side couldn't make it, including sister-in-law. I was upset, but even more so when we asked each person why. Father-in-law and mother-in-law are divorced and remarried, so they each had different excuses. Father-in-law said they had season tickets to a small local college game on that day. It wasn't a special game the day we were holding the party. Mother-in-law, who is a on-the-go barber, said she had to do hair for a client that day. My husband's godmother said she had plans at her lake house that weekend. Finally, sister-in-law texted us back and told us that she could make it if we combined her baby shower with the twins' first birthday. She is about two months pregnant at this point. I was confused because she had already said she could make it and had planned on making it. Then his side of the family started texting us about her idea. She told everyone that we were going to do it before we even agreed. I had spent months planning the boy's first birthday. I know it's silly and that they'll never remember their first birthday, but it was special to us. Then suddenly... Everyone could come and move their plans around for this combined baby shower birthday party. I refused to combine their party with her baby shower. You can take the attention away from me, but you can't take the attention away from my babies. That's where I draw the line. His whole family was angry and decided to go back to their original plans and not come to the boy's first birthday and said, we'll celebrate another day. She planned her shower for the day after their party, so everyone came to her baby shower, 
and at the end of it, they sing happy birthday to the twins. I know it's petty, but this year I decided not to invite them to the twins' birthday party. Their party is next month and my husband supports us by not inviting them. However, my mother-in-law asked us when their party was going to be. And I told her that they weren't invited this year because of the way they disregarded my kids last year. She had a huge fit. So am I the a-hole to leave out this side of the family after they ditched my boys last year? NTA. They made their bed now. They can lie in it. All of them specifically chose not to come to your kiddos party and they are making it very obvious that they have a favorite in the family. Have a fun birthday with your kids and let your husband's side of the family deal with the consequences of their actions. If they wanted to be in the twins' life, they would make the time and they can also deal with the consequences of their actions when they miss out on the opportunities to make cherished memories with your kids. NTA. As a mother, you have to protect your children, and this is protecting your children. The family who empowers the entitled aunt shouldn't be in their lives, making them feel like they're not as good as someone else and making their confidence shrink. You're a good mom. You want to make your children happy and make one day special and all about them. Kudos.